let's make welcome to the Resource Hour, Dr. David Klein of the Stages of Life Institute in Longwood. Now, I want to start off the interview just a little bit differently than we usually do. If any of you out there are feeling a little tired right now, a little sleepy right now, a little bit hard to get your concentration in line, join me in going, Oh, that was better. Okay, uh, doctor, we're talking about sleep disorders, and I could put my head down on this counter right now and go right to sleep because I didn't last night. Well, you know, it, it, and you can <laughs> see you can see it in, in 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 your look, okay, which is kind of why we decided today to discuss this. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was rather let's say say we, there was some self interest involved, so I wouldn't suggest that you uh, sleep through this ten minute segment. Okay, well, the first thing that you need to understand about sleep and sleep disorders is that it's not a passive process, okay? It's not like, gee, if we cut off the electricity, the lights turn out. It doesn't work that way at all. It takes just as much energy for the brain to sleep as it does to remain awake, okay? It's going through these administrative, these cleaning out processes that your computer does. It's the way these things go. And if something goes wrong, if an app stops running, let's say, mm-hmm. and it keeps you from sleeping, keeps you from doing what you need to do, you're going to end up not only getting uh, a bad day of it, you know, where you just don't feel like you can concentrate, you just don't feel good, but it can cause other far more serious illnesses to include weight gain, hypertension, diabetes, depression, and the list can keep going on and on and mm. on. So it really doesn't, um, it doesn't, uh, work well for you to to ignore it. You know, I would give anything for a good night's rest. Oh, okay. Well, have you thought about buying a good quality melatonin? Well, I don't want to pay money for that. Okay. <laughs> so you'd be willing to give anything for it, but you have to decide really what's it worth to you to feel well. Okay. And nobody cares more about this than you do. Mm-hmm. So let's start there. What is it that keeps an individual from sleeping? Why is it that you have a sleep disorder? And there are really three major ways to break it down, okay? And it's useful to do this because it helps the doctor figure out what might be wrong. So if you can't get to sleep, they call this early insomnia. If you find yourself getting to sleep but you wake up in the middle of the night, that's called mid-insomnia. And if you wake up early in the morning and can't get back to bed, they call this late insomnia. Okay, now you're an expert on sleep disorders. What is it, okay, (laughs) that can keep an individual from getting to sleep? Okay, that's usually going to be some type of anxiety disorder, but it could also be something as simple as habituation or adaptation to medications of a pain-relieving nature, opiates in particular. Okay, pain relievers shut down the pituitary glands secretion of a hormone called ACTH and another one called melatonin. So let's figure this one out. So if you're taking pain relievers for as little as three to six weeks, and they do not need to be real real heavy-duty ones, it can influence this. If you're taking medications like Adderall or Ritalin for adult-onset uh, ADD, it will shut this down. Terribly, terribly important thing to understand. And there are other medications that can do this as well, and they're, they're going to sound fairly innocuous. Things like Flonase that you're taking for sinus infection shuts it down as well. So steroids will do it. Now, of the people listening in at this time, probably two-thirds of the individuals are out there doing this. They're taking steroids for their, for their allergies, mm. thinking that nothing more is happening because it's only going in their nose. Okay, remember that when you watch movies where they're snorting cocaine. Yeah, it goes in your nose okay. It goes through your your entire body very, very rapidly. Next to intravenous, that's the most rapid way to give anybody any drug at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we do about early insomnia? Well, the first thing that we do is to try to figure out chemically how to reverse the damage that was done by those aforementioned interventions. Okay, so I typically start people off with melatonin. Now, why do we use melatonin? Because it's a hormone. Your body uses it to knock you out. But it's a temporary matter. It only lasts about an hour, hour and a half. If you take too much melatonin, it doesn't really matter. If you take enough after a series of days of bad rest, it will cause nightmares. Is that bad? No. Suck it up. Okay, you got to make your way through it. Just suck up the nightmares. The college kids pay a lot of money for those hallucinations. Enjoy it. Okay? The antihistamines that you're taking to knock you out are really bad news taken chronically because they will cause changes in your brain that will mimic a disorder you've probably never heard of called Alzheimer's. 
Okay, so antihistaminic, mm. anticholinergic medications, even if taken just to sleep, will eventually lead in symptoms that will lead you to believe, okay, that you may have Alzheimer's or something similar. So early insomnia very, fre very frequently is self, uh, let's say self-inflicted, okay? It's just the way these things go. Now, anxiety can do it. A bad day can do it. But how many bad days do you have, especially if you're retired, okay? So the bad days are long behind you. Okay, yeah, you might be worrying about the Internal Revenue Service. You might be worrying about, you know, the, the meth, uh, the, you know, the meth lab next door. Who the heck knows? Okay, it's not important enough to keep you from sleeping. So anxiety can do it. Mm -hmm. We can deal with that at a, at, a, at a separate time. Now, the one that, that I find to be most fascinating, okay, is mid-insomnia. Now, mid-insomnia is the one that, where you get up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and can't get back to bed. And you think that this is normal. Or if you're a guy, you wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, you wake up, and what, what's the first thing that, that a guy wants to do? And that's to hit the urinal. Okay, mm -hmm. why is that? Because that's what guys do. All right? Now, if you're up, you might as well blame it on something. But more times than not, getting up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning routinely like this is going to be due to something called adrenal fatigue or adrenal failure. When the adrenal glands deteriorate in function, which they do in everybody as they get, a, get older, Okay, then you find yourself getting up at two or three o'clock in the morning. You do this night after night after night. It causes you some uh, depression, uh, depressive symptoms. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's going to go. So how do you treat adrenal fatigue, adrenal failure? Well, the first thing that you should do is get some blood work done to find out what your DHEA level is doing, your pregnenolone level is doing, and find out what your testosterone, progesterone, estrogen are doing. Because, you know, if, if none of these things are right, you're not going to stay asleep, and cortisol is probably the level that most people are missing. This is what you need to find out. So you draw these mm -hmm. levels and see where you are. So it's very, very important that we do this. So how, you know, so how do you go mm -hmm. about doing it otherwise? Let's say you don't have the capability, you don't have the facility uh, to, you know, to treat the adrenals. Well, I don't suggest that people go out necessarily and take DHEA right. because you need to understand age and gender differences in how you do this. And the zit face kid at the, at the uh, box store is not the person to ask. You can ask your physician. They may know, but they probably won't. Right. So in men, the dosage is typically about 50 milligrams daily. Okay, DHEA, dihydroepiandosterone, uh, is a very, very important hormone. Okay, in men, 50 milligrams is a good starting dosage. You take it in the morning with a fish oil. It should be absorbed properly. But women is where it gets tricky, okay, because it could be as little as 5 milligrams or as much as 25. Okay, and if you take too much, it's every bit as bad as if you took too little. Oh, wow. Okay, cortisol is a prescription item. I use it in my practice very routinely. You know, 10, 20 milligrams of Cortef and an individual can knock them straight out. They feel good, and that's the end of that. Okay, we have a preparation that we call adrenal, A-D-R-E-N-A-L-L. -L. And what this is, this is, this is made by the same people that make Nature Throid. It's a non-prescription oh. item. It's over-the-counter. And what it is, it's an adrenal gland desiccant. And why is it over the counter? God only knows, because I don't know. If I were the FDA, I would make this stuff prescription tomorrow. But, okay, two, two of these capsules twice daily is enough to fix most people. I've got some that need as many as four, but blood work is really necessary to address this and everything else properly. The medications are not expensive. You can get the high, you can get pharmaceutical grade melatonin from us for about $6 a month. Okay, the dosage is about 10, uh, 10 milligrams daily for most people. Every once in a while it takes 20 milligrams, and that's fine. But that's what it takes. The uh, adrenal costs about $39 a month. Uh, if you buy it in bulk, it costs a whole lot less than that. But just the same, that's how I like my patients to deal with mid-insomnia. Uh, mid mm -hmm. Early insomnia usually ref, uh, reflects depression. You give people antidepressants. That sometimes helps it. You can do this over-the-counter as well using something called 5-HTP and L-theanine. Mm -hmm. You take these when you go to bed, it helps the depression, it knocks you out, does it very, very gently, helps you with the depression as well, and it will knock you down. Well, how about if you take the, uh, the melatonin and the uh, L-theanine and the 5-HTP, but you're not taking the adrenal? You won't stay asleep. You won't go to sleep. Yeah, because it's not dealing with the, with the appropriate problem. So it's very much like any other machine. Okay, you have multiple maintenance issues. So if you have a car that's not starting, you replace the spark plugs and it's still not starting properly, maybe that's not the only issue. You better check your fuel pump, better check your carburetor, injectors. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be right for this very complicated machine 
to work properly. You know, I've seen it happen as a result of elevated insulin levels. You know, when that happens, you have this uh, inflammatory process inside the arteries that can keep you a- awake as well. It's a little less likely, but it's something that needs to be checked. Okay, well, while I have maybe somebody else interview you the rest of the afternoon, can I have the keys to the nutraceutical store? Because <laughs> I need some for tonight. Well, you'll have to wait till 8 a.m. tomorrow when we open. Office hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5. We are located in Longwood at 1917 Booth Circle. That's right off of I-4 and 434. The phone number is 407 407- Six seven nine three 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 seven. Our website is stagesoflife.net, and we're also on Facebook at Stages of Life Medical Institute. Of Life Medical Institute.